Hey guys, how are you? I am April with Grab Your Glam. And if you haven't been here before, welcome. If you have, welcome back. Appreciate you following along with our little makeup journey. Um, so I took a poll today in my VIP group on Hey Nicole, um, which look y'all wanted to see. And the ones that voted, the majority wanted the kind of plum everyday makeup look. So that's what I'm gonna do for you today. Hey Terry. All right. Um, so here, I'll show you my personal palette. So this is my personal palette and I know it looks like it has a lot of colors in it. If you can't tell, I've got a lot of color correcting that I have to do. Um, so that's why you wanted A. I'll still do A, just not today. Um, and then this is for my eyes. This is my Illuminator Starlet. And then this is what I do my brows with. So that's what we're working with today. Um, if you've been here any length of time, you know that I always start out with my color correction. Um, this is Mango, which is this guy right here. And this is going to help cover up those purple undertones that I have under my eyes um, from excessive caffeine and lack of sleep. Um, a really good one to use if you have purplish undertones and you tend to be older, like me, really anyone, but especially older women <laughs> need to go darker under the eye before they can brighten. And that's what helps you not get that kind of uh, raccoon eye or like someone punch you in the eye within a few hours after trying to brighten under your eyes. If you've ever experienced that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and because it's orange in tone, it's going to help cancel out those bluish and purpley tones. Okay, so there is my under eye correction with Mango. Now I'm going to take the um, small end of my Best Blend Forever, and I'm going to use this contour right here called Aspen, or sorry, Ash. If you're a little bit darker toned, you'd use Ash like me. If you're a little lighter toned, you would use Aspen. Hey, Laura, how are you? Um, and okay, so here's the thing. Your nose is always going to be a different color than the rest of your face. It's just simple facts. Um, so a lot of women, if they have any trouble at all getting their makeup to stick, it's going to be on their nose, just like me. So what you can do to combat that is find either ash or aspen, depending on your skin tone and lay that down as a base. Now, my particular nose is a little more unruly than most in that it has to have a more neutral toned highlight on it to stick. So in the summer, when I have more of a tan, like right now, I use Sandy. In the winter, I use Candlelit. And if you don't know the difference between neutral tones, warm tones, and cool tones, I can do, um, oh wow, congratulations. Um, I can do a tutorial on how to figure out those tones. So, I'm gonna let the Aspen sit for a minute while I do the rest of my face. So I'm coming back in with Mango, which is what I did under my eyes. And you can tell that my cheeks here and my chin get a lot more red. So I'm gonna focus most of my Mango right there. Mango also just happens to be my summer color. So this process varies a little bit in the winter, but once we get there, I'll show you that. So I'm focusing mainly, again, on my cheeks, my chin and mouth area where I tend to hold my redness. And then right here, you can tell right just above the center of my nose and in my eyebrows, I hold redness there. That's the magic. <laughs> That's the magic that we try to create. It still looks totally natural, but no one knows that you have 10,000 different colors of skin <laughs> on your face. And you can see how kind of red and purpley my eyelids are. I am a big fan of putting your makeup on your eyelids anyway. Their skin, why wouldn't you? Um, but also, if they tend to be really discolored like mine, just stick your, your highlight on there. I know you don't want winter, babes. Um, but it, it comes, whether we want it or not. Um, okay, so since I've let the Aspen sit for a second, 
I'm going to go back in with my neutral based highlight that my nose likes, which for right now is Sandy, because I've still got a little bit of my summer color. And I love using this brush for my all over highlight. It's kind of a more medium coverage brush, but it really helps when you want to get that natural skin look while still getting plenty of coverage and it not feeling heavy at all. It's my very favorite brush for this. Okay, so the whole outline of my face, if you notice, I haven't put anything there yet. Um, that's because I go in with Bella. Um, again, in the summertime, this is what works for my skin tones. I will always bronze with Bella, but in the wintertime, I don't use it as the entire outer ring of my face like I can in the summer. Um, and I start up here by my hairline. Don't mind the hair, by the way. I have a hair appointment tomorrow, and it cannot come soon enough. Oh, my goodness. This hair is struggling. So I'm just coming along, all along the tops of my forehead, bring it down a little bit into the temples, and then across my cheekbones. And I'm just gonna move it towards the center of my face gently so that it meets up with where I did that mango. Hi, Stacy. Okay. So again, we're just using Bella with the big end of the Best Blend, or sorry, the, um, blush and bronzer brush to add warmth to the edges of my face. Okay. And you can pile on the bronzer or you can use it really lightly. Really depends on your skin tone and preference. Okay. Here we go. There's Bella. All right. At this point, I like to use my perfector sponge. Um, it just picks up any excess from what I just put on before I start applying my contour and my lip and cheek and my brightener. Okay, so now that my face is pretty much one color, now we can start actual like fun things like contour. So I'm going to make my round face look a little more chiseled. I'm starting up towards the top of my ear, moving down diagonally towards the edge of my mouth. Um, if you're younger, you can move it even further down. If you're a little bit older like I am, you wanna keep it a little further back. I love using the Best Blend Forever for my contour, um, as opposed to like the um, Detail Hack. The Detail Hack is going to be a much sharper line where this is much more um, subtle and already blended, it makes it so much easier to blend out in the end. But if you like that more sharper contour look, best, uh, the Detail Hack is amazing. Okay, and the Indigo, uh, the contour color I am using is Indigo, which is this guy right here in the middle. And everyone's like, oh my goodness, that's so dark. It is, but what's the point of using contour if it's so light you can't really tell you've used contour? And it gets blended out and blends in with all of your other makeup so beautifully that in the end, no one actually can realize that you used that dark of a contour. All right, so again, I started up here at my ear, moved down along my jawline, and I stopped right here at my jowls because I want to make those disappear rather than going all the way through my jaw, which would make them more evident. We're gonna work on making our Ned just a little bit less visible. All right, and then I'm just gonna run my Perfector sponge over where I just put my contour. By using the um, brush that I use, there's really not much blending that you have to do in addition to it, so I'm just using this to make sure I pick up any excess makeup that doesn't need to be on there. All right, so the next step that I like to do is my lip and cheek. 
and I have been getting a ton of requests on how I mix these two colors. So my cheek colors that I'm gonna to mix today is Dahlia and Plum. <laughs> yes, Ned. Um, so Dahlia obviously is a very, very bright color and Plum is a much more earthy, warm, dark color, kind of like the color of my shirt. So I love both of them on their own, but when I want something that just brightens up but still has that you know, warm, deep plum color, I mix the two of them and it's perfect. All right, so what I do, I just dip into Dahlia, rub into plum. I do always kind of blot it off on a paper towel. And then I start applying gently and slowly because we can build color up. You can remove color too, but it's easier to build up than it is to take away. So. And I stay out of these lines and out of this line with all of my product besides my normal all over colors. You don't want any contour in those lines. You don't want any lip and cheek in those lines. All right. So now that I've applied as much color as I want, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on a paper towel and then use my brush to kind of soften and blend that. And you need to take it one step further. Grab your all over color on your brush that you did your whole face with. In this case, it's the B squared brush for me. And just run it along the top and outside edges to make that look nice and seamless and natural. Okay. All right. My next thing I'm going to do for my face is brighten, which for me is mostly white peach, but I do add a little bit of sandy under my eyes. Um, because I'm older, I don't want to go too light under my eyes. Um, and white peach is a pretty light one. So I add it with my sandy. So I pop just a little bit right here. I have a natural dip in my cheeks. Most people do right there. So right under my contour, I pop a little bit of brightness and that just helps that contour just pop and it shapes your face just that much more and it's beautiful. I love to do it. I brighten right here on my chin in this, whatever the heck that thing's called, above your cupid's bow. I brighten right here in between my eyes on my forehead. And then if you notice, I have like, I don't know if I scratch myself in the middle of the night or what that is exactly. But to cover it up, all I'm doing is taking the small end of my Best Blend Forever and dabbing my mango right there. And then when I blend it, you won't see it anymore. Okay. All right. I have not contoured my nose yet, so I'm going to do that now. And remember, my nose likes ash, so I do not blend or contour my nose with indigo. I use cooler tones on my nose. It's what works best for me. So I'm gonna contour with ash. I'm just running it along the sides and I bring it down on the end into a V. And this is gonna make my nose appear straight, which it isn't, and appear thinner. you're creating shadows. And then I just take my pinky and run it in my white peach and we use that to run it right down the middle. As much as you can with a pinky and then you can go back in if you got it where you didn't want it with that contour color. Okay. And you can do this line as thin as you want or as wide as you want. It's totally up to you. All right. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is brighten under my eyes. So I just dip once in sandy and once in white peach. And I'm going to bring it down the side, kind of into a big V, and then up along the edge of my eye at an angle. 
and then I use the excess to fill in here in the middle. You do not want a lot of product under your eyes, so use as little as possible to achieve what you want. So the thicker the line is on your nose, so you're talking about the center line, I'm assuming. The thicker it is on your nose, the, the wider your nose seems. The thinner it is, the thinner your nose seems. Good question. Hi, Sean. All right, so I have brightened. Almost everywhere I'm gonna brighten. And we're just using our perfector sponge to get rid of any excess. Hi, Ann. Hi, cat. Okay, so I just blended out all my brightening. And there's one other place that I brighten, um, and it's because, um, well, two reasons. One, if you notice, I have a pretty distinct marionette or laugh line that runs from my nose down through my chin. And I really like to be make sure that my mask area is bright. So I just run that sandy um, white peach mix right on top of those marionette lines. And that helps me ensure that I stay bright right there and it helps kind of minimize the look of those marionette lines. Hi, Allison. Okay, so now we've brought us all to one color using our color correction, just where we need it. We did um, the warmth and bronzing around the outer edges. We've done our brightening in the center, and then we've got our contour and our lip and cheek. So that is a basic everyday look. I forgot to do this. I wanted to show you guys this. So for those of us that were not blessed with nice full lips like me, I like to use, it's called City Lips. Um, and if you know you're gonna want to use a lipstick color, grab the clear. And I try to remember to put this on before I start my makeup. So it'll be plumping my lips while I'm doing my makeup. But of course, I didn't remember remember that today. So I'll put it on now. Okay. So just put that on before you start doing your makeup. By the time you're done, it will have plumped your lips. And you can either leave it the gloss or put a color over it. Your nice plump lips. Okay. So the next thing that I do is use my setting powder. You can either use Vanilla Dust, which is our press setting powder, or I really like this Hourglass Veil Mineral Loose Setting Powder. Um, you get this at Sephora, either online or in store, and it's very, very finely milled. So, used properly. Don't cake it on, but used properly. It's not going to accentuate any fine lines which is wonderful and a huge problem with most powders. And honestly, it feels like silk going on. It's amazing. So I'm just using my Power Powder brush to put that on here on my forehead, my nose, under my eyes. I run it right here on my chin. And because I'm a face toucher, I run it along the sides of my jaw. And then I'm gonna let it sit like that while I do my brows. Just let it acclimate to my skin and that makes it more durable. All right, for my brows, I am using a mixture of Arabian Nights Cream Eyeshadow and then our Trust Powdered Eyeshadow. And the reason I've started mixing those is I like the kind of structure that a cream gives, but I don't want it quite so sticky and kind of thick. 
as you get when you use a contour or a gel. So I found that using a cream eyeshadow is a really good alternative to that. So all I do is dip once in there, dip once in there, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of come up right where my hairline starts and I'm gonna follow this line under. to create a nice shape. I'm just basically following my natural brow shape. I got a lot of, a little thick under there. I need to uh, groom my brows. Hey, Denise. Need to get in there and pluck those. But we're gonna work with what we got right now. Okay, if you ever feel like you get it too dark in a section, all you have to do is just flip your brush over, kind of comb out that section, and it'll pull some of that product out for you. Okay, you always want, as a general rule, your brows to start here. Aw, thank you. Your arch to come here and it to end about there. Okay, so use this part of your nose as a guide for all that. Okay, we're gonna attempt this brow. This tends to be my problem child. We're gonna see how it works. You really never know what you're gonna get with this one. Hey, my dog saw a squirrel or something. Okay, and again, I'm just running it along its natural shape to give it a nice kind of clean look. You always want to brush the product into your brows the way that the hair grows. So like my hair grows up here, but it grows sides here. So you're not going to brush up here unless you're doing like a, a werewolf look or something. And then I'm just going to fill in where it's a little sparse in some places. Excuse my dog. And my daughter yelling at my dog. <sighs> it's a madhouse here, folks. All right. So there's our brows. I would literally spend all day just fussing with them, but I have to make myself stop. Okay. So before I use my setting powder, I'm going to take the big end of my um, B squared or brush and bronzer, blush and bronzer brush. And I'm just going to um, dust off that excess powder. So if you barely have any brows, um, it would look noticeable if you drew a huge brow. So what you have to do is start shaping along your current shape and then slowly start working up into a little bit larger brow, but it's really important to use the correct color. You don't want to use something that's really dark to try to make that shape um, because then you're gonna end up with a huge, really dark brow. <laughs> Not if you do it right, Michelle. <laughs> I can help you. Um, so use a color that is maybe even a shade lighter well, you are kind of drawing them on, but use a shade that's maybe a shade lighter. Um, and something to keep in mind, if you are filling in patches, it is much easier to get a good fill with it still looking natural by using a little bit of contour. And again, don't make it a contour that's too dark for what you need. Make sure you're using products that are correct color for what you are trying to shape. Um, so... 
<laughs> Denise, um, you are drawing them on and that's okay. I draw some on every day. Um, but start slow, keep to your shape and don't use colors that are too dark. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. All right, Michelle, let's tackle your plum eyeshadow issues. Cause that's actually what we're doing today. Um, so first things first, I'm going to use a setting spray. You can use the stay spray, which I love, but I found this works better for my lifestyle. Um, being on the motorcycle all the time, um, sweating, being caught in rain, all that stuff. This stuff is amazing. So, um, I'm going to spray that on real quick. And it kind of feels like hairspray on your face. So it's a very fine mist. It's not um, like Niagara Falls, like stay spray tends to be. So there's that. All right, so the colors that I'm using, again, is Unicorn Mama Amethyst and I can never remember the name of this, As You Wish. And I am gonna put a little bit of Starlet Illuminator on. Y'all, I was terrified of our powder illuminator for like a year and a half. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I finally figured out a technique that works for me to get plenty of the, the color and shimmer and that I want and it still look, um, you know, not patchy and ridiculous. So I use the um, Best Blend Forever and I start right here at the top of my, now again, don't go in here. Um, but I start right here at the top of my blush, on the top of my cheekbone, and I just brush that on. And you can see, see the shimmer? So you don't, <laughs> so I swipe it, and then I like dust it off before I start this process. Because especially with ones like Glamazing, if you just wipe it in there and swipe it on your face, look, you're going to look like you got sideswiped by a unicorn. Right. Unless that's the look you're going for, this is what you'll want to do to avoid that. And then I just take it and kind of smush it and I run it down my nose. Now, if you have a larger nose on the end, you don't want to accentuate that, don't do it on your nose. This is totally fine. And then I run it atop the cross of my, across the top of my lips to give that nice shimmer up there. Again, if you have a lot of deep set lines up here, you don't want to use illuminator right there. Okay. Now, once I've got it placed, I'm really going to wipe my brush off and then I'm going to check it on my hand to make sure it's not shimmery, which it's not. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to blend that illuminator. This is especially important with ones that really stand out like Glamazing and Georgia and those more whoa ones. This one's pretty subtle um, and uh, Angel, is that the, the pink one that's powder? I don't think it is. Anyway, Photoshop, that's what it is. Hi, Liza. Okay, so that's how you do powder illuminator without looking like a side swiped by a unicorn. Okay. So now we're going to get to this plum eyeshadow look and I didn't clean my brushes before I came out here. So I'm going to make sure that they're clean. Um, you always want to make sure that you don't have any color left over from your last eye look on your brushes before you start a new one. So typically just rubbing them on a dry paper towel is going to get them clean enough. Um, but you can, hey Tish, you can um, also use Houdini, which is our brush cleaner, and it's honestly the most amazing brush cleaner I've ever used. I cannot find anything that works as good as it. So, all right. First thing I'm gonna start with is Mama, which is this kind of, it's a matte kind of warm pink. And I'm gonna use that as a base all over for our transition color. And I'm using the large fluffy end of the eyeshadow everything brush for this. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And Mama, as you can tell, you can layer it to get a lot of color out of it, but I don't want a ton of color in this one, which is one of the reasons I use Mama. 
Okay, so that's all we're doing with Mama. The next thing I'm gonna do is grab Amethyst, still with this big Blessed Blend Forever. No, Blend and Tap. Nope, eyeshadow everything, good gravy. This is the eyeshadow everything brush. <laughs> and I just grabbed a little bit of Amethyst. I'm gonna start here at the corner and I'm gonna work it into my crease and just above, because I do have hooded eyes, so I want it to still look like I have eyeshadow on, even though I have my eyes open. So I do blend it up from the crease. And I bring it down a little bit into the lid. Hi, Rachel. Okay. And a lot of using shadows that are a little out of your wheelhouse is just you feeling comfortable and rocking it. So I'm kind of wiping any excess off and I'm gonna use this same brush to blend. And then I'm gonna flip the brush over to the smaller end and I'm still gonna take this amethyst, that purple color that I was using, and I'm going to run it under my lash line. You can go over as far as you want with it. I like taking it very lightly all the way across. I have it more um, concentrated towards the outer edge and then it gets lighter as it goes across. You can control that by um, pressure. Um, depending on how wrinkled they are, I've had to hold some clients' lids gently to apply it and have them kind of stretch their eye out. Um, that's probably your best tip. Don't pull hard on your eyes because you're only going to make that problem worse over time but just be gentle about it and while you're kind of pulling it taut here raise your eyebrow to make it a nice smooth um, area if you are have if you do have very wrinkly eyelids you probably want to stick more to matte than shimmer because the shimmer is going to make that more evident so just something to keep in mind um, so the next thing I'm going to do is as you wish, which just looks like a cream, but let me put it on my hand. See if you can see, you can't really tell there, but it actually is kind of holographic. It's a really, really pretty color. And I love putting our shimmers on with my finger. Yeah. It makes it a lot harder to do it when your skin's moving with your brush for sure. Okay, so I'm just starting over here at the inner edge and using my finger to blend it over towards where I put the amethyst on my lid. And the reason I'm using my finger is our shadows, for whatever um, reason, the shimmer ones, just really pop when you use your finger to apply them. I'm gonna put it right here, a little bit in the inner corner. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab that eyeshadow everything brush again and just lightly blend these two together just like that and then the last thing I'm going to do is take my multitasker which I could use my eyeshadow everything but so if you just have that brush just clean off that smaller tip and use it to do this this is unicorn it's this white shimmer hi Julie and it's coming right up here at my brow to kind of highlight and raise that brow. Okay. And then I like to add just a little bit of it here in the corners to really open up my eye and make it look like I sleep. It's amazing what makeup can do for you. Okay. So the next thing I did on the look that y'all wanted 
was a little bit of a wing, um, which, thank you. I had not done a wing until about two months ago. It was my first time ever, <laughs> and I'm, I'm getting much better at it. Um, but this is the Revlon Colorstay Sharp Line. It's a felt tip one. If you have um, wrinkly lids and you wanna do a wing, don't use a felt. You'll want to use one that's more like this, which is a liquid with this thin brush, okay? Um, it glides much easier and won't catch the skin like, like a felt does. Um, the only reason I'm not using this is I accidentally picked up waterproof and I cannot hardly get this stuff off once I put it on. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the felt tip one. All right, so I start over here at the corner and stick very close to my lash line. And I just use the tip. And then once you get about to the middle, flip your hand over and go from the other side. Don't try to drag it all the way across using the same direction. Okay. Um, and then I come up from the bottom to draw my line. And then I'm going to connect it. Make like a, what is that? A right triangle or something like that? I don't know. I wasn't great at geometry. When you first start doing this, your wings are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger because you're trying to fix them. Oh, also, just a tip, if you do use liquid like I just showed you, do not close your eyes until it's dry. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and liquid liner, like, can be super intimidating, but if you work fast, if you mess up, you can probably usually fix it. Thank you. I like my wings to come up to a point and it's not cooperating with me today. And this is why wings get big. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna quit with that because I'm gonna look like Maleficent in a minute. Okay, let's do this eye. And like one of the hardest things is just making your eyes match at this point. Yeah. Aw, thank you. Okay, and then just fill that in. I'm probably making a really weird face right now. Make sure you um, go all the way down to your lash line. Okay, now I gotta extend my wing because I kept fudging with the first one. Nope, oh, it's still bigger. Yeah, apparently I have this weird uh, talent of being able to close one eye at a time and keep the other one open. I thought everyone could do that, but once I started doing lives and started doing it, I found out that no, that's inaccurate. Not everyone can do that, and it kind of freaks people out. So, okay, we're going to leave the wingies the way they are before they take over my whole face. All right, um, let's do, uh, thank you. Um, what's this stuff called? Mascara. 
I am using the L'Oreal Double Extend Tubing Mascara. Thank you. And this, um, it's a two-step. You do a primer and then you do the mascara. Um, one really nice thing about using a tube of mascara, thank you, is um, if you mess up, just let it dry and it brushes right off, which is super nice. My eyelashes are in a growth period, so they're like super short right now. Makes me sad. Okay, now we're gonna do the mascara. And this is what it's called, L'Oreal Double Extend. You can get it, uh, I think I got mine at Kroger. Okay, so lashes go through cycles, grow cycles, where they will be growing and then they will stop growing, they will shed, and you will grow new. Um, they go about every six months typically, and so right now mine are in a regrowth period. Yeah, that's why. It's, they are in their regrowth period, so they'll get longer, and then they'll get to a point where they'll stop growing, and you'll shed. You'll notice like you're shedding eyelashes, um, and then your new ones will start growing. Yes, ma'am. I'm so particular about my eyeshadow. Or, or, well that too, but mascara. Okay. And um, I like to do two coats of the primer and two coats of the mascara. I don't know that I'll do that second coat on this live just for time. But I feel like a pirate with this bandana on. <laughs> but trust me, y'all, it was better than what my hair looks like right now. Okay. There's that. All right, so... Now that we have let our lips get all nice and plump, I'm going to do the lips, which is, I um, am going to, no, I didn't ride today, but I did yesterday. Um, I'm gonna outline an indigo. And I am using the small end of my multitasker. And indigo is the same thing that I contoured with just a little bit ago. I'm just following the shape of my lips. And then I darken the edges. And this is gonna help your lip look more full. Keeping the center light and the edges darker. All right, then I'm going to just take a little bit of plum and a little bit of Dahlia.
and go right there in the center and blend it to those darker edges. And there we are. And there is our kind of everyday plum look. Um, not talking on a live, this would have taken me um, 20 minutes. Um, so however much time you normally spend on your makeup, I don't think 20 minutes is too bad. I used to spend a lot more time <laughs> doing it and it didn't look nearly this good. So um, I will put in the description the colors that I used again um, so you guys can have them for your reference. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't gotten your color match from me yet um, and you don't have an artist already, contact me. I would love to get in touch with you either if you're local in person or if you're not, we can do it virtually and get you on your way to the most beautiful skin and makeup routine you've ever had. So, I will talk to you all later. Everyone enjoy your evening. Bye.